Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Cisco, and we are live, and we're about to go on a winter <laughs> winter vortex prayer walk here in Texas. Now, uh, welcome you to our Friday edition of our High Noon broadcast, and of course, High Noon is much more than a time zone. It is an idea. It is an understanding. It is a revelation. It is a concept that we know that in the presence of God, it's always high noon. That regardless of where we are in the prophetic map, we might be early in the morning, we might be uh, in the afternoon, or for us in this generation, it might be the 11th hour. But uh, for God, he is always the same. He is always as great as he has always been. He is almighty. You cannot have more power than that. So I just welcome all of you today. Uh, to a very dreary, uh, rainy edition of our uh, prayer broadcast. And we're going to have a little bit of excitement today. I don't know how long we're going to be out there, but I have a couple of thoughts before we actually get out of the car. I'm right on the border of uh, Deer Park and, and Pasadena. And uh, we have been praying. When I go outside and I do these prayer walks, I pray along these power lines. It's just something that I've kind of used as symbolism. But, you know, we, we have cues in nature that God uses as a way to reveal things to us. And I've used this concept with you before, but I'm going to just do a little bit of a refresh for anybody out there that hasn't done this before <clears throat> or hasn't heard me talk about this before. The kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus was always telling parables, starting with the kingdom of heaven is like. Now, he is basically saying how God operates is this way. God's kingdom is like this. And so, uh, and then he integrates it into something that they know about a seed in the ground. Uh, he tells about trees. He talks about, uh, all kinds of things that are in nature for them. And, uh, or he talks about wedding feasts or he talks about merchant men or going out into the marketplace or, you know, uh, harvest time and grapes. And I mean, is all of these different parables that he uses, it's things that they know to talk about things that they don't know. And so in Romans 1, we have the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So everything in nature, everything that is visible is explaining something invisible. So Paul gives us added insight and he gets very direct. Jesus is being much more poetic about it, uh, but he is still saying it very directly. Hey, the kingdom of heaven's like. In other words, it's not just in the synagogue or in the temple. The kingdom of God is everywhere. And if you can see it, it will help you with every part of your life. If you can learn to observe it, now, obviously in prayer, we're entering to our closet, which is its secret, and we shut our eyes. And so there is a very powerful principle of just going into that private place and whatever it is and shutting out the rest of the world. And that is something that we do effectively in private or in person. But we also see that there was great revival that happened in the streets in the book of Acts where there was demonstration in the streets, where people were getting healed in the streets. The shadow of Peter passing by caused people to just get up off of their stretchers. And this is the kind of thing that we want. Uh, we really want God's glory to be manifested through us to, to really give him credit, to show people how great our God is. Everything else is in the streets. You know, um, we have these gay pride, you know, marches where they walk naked through the streets and the cameras are out and, you know, they're doing whatever they do. And, you know, so I told my wife one day, I, I just put my arm around her and I kind of had, you know, some public display of affection. It wasn't anything uh, inappropriate or, you know, but it was still a little bit embarrassing to her because I, you know, kind of pulled her up close to me and then I gave her a kiss on the cheek and she's like, you're embarrassing me. And I said, you know, if they can walk down the street for pride week, then certainly I can celebrate my wife, uh, and, and, uh, give her a hug or a kiss in public to let people know that, uh, there are couples out here that still love each other and we're not embarrassed about it. I'm certainly, um, 
not saying that we should match extreme for extreme, but I am saying we should not be embarrassed. We should be who we are. And so doing a prayer walk is a way of kind of getting out there and facing all of the spirit world and just saying, you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. And yes, I'll go out here and walk and pray. And I won't do anything uh, that that's going to be discredit, you know, the church or, or, or to do anything that would maybe be an embarrassment to God or, or speak badly about him. But I am going to spend some time walking the land and I'm going to pray the prayers and I'm going to learn the things that I need to learn. And I'm not going to be ashamed of him. And so if I confess him, he will confess me. And this is what I want. If I will confess him publicly, he said there's a, an advantage in the spirit world that he will tell the angels, back that guy up, be with him. I will confess you in heaven. And so uh, this, is, this is something of what we do. Of course, we know in the Old Testament, he told Abraham to walk in the land. And of course, we see the apostles out in the streets, walking in the streets and house to house, etc. So I think there's a balanced approach to all of this. But one more layer of this for us today that I would like to bring up to you. Brother Barnes taught me this, and I think it's really apropos, especially today, uh, when the weather's a little bit more um, extreme. And I know it's going to get worse. And some of you, like my Norway people, <laughs> you're just chuckling at all us Texas people because it's 38 degrees with a little bit of rain. And you're like, um, you know, <laughs> we have you know four feet of snow and it's you know 12 below zero or maybe my Alaska people or all my Chicago people up there that have been buried and Wisconsin people my Midwest people this is like you're like hey I'd like to go on vacation and come down there to that winter vortex <laughs> uh, down down in Texas uh, we have a uh, we have some uh, some dear friends coming down uh, from Chicago next week, and uh, they're kind of rolling their eyes at at what uh, at what's happening down here. But because we don't have salt trucks, and because there's no experience with it, uh, the ice is is really a big deal here. And so our mayor is kind of shutting down the roads on Monday, and uh, we have to just kind of debate what do we do because we're just not prepared for it. We're not conditioned to it. And I think sometimes, oh yeah, Oklahoma, 16 degrees. That's pretty. That's pretty intense. Um, uh, ice on the roads and all of this stuff. So uh, when you when you have ice on the roads, it's very dangerous. But if you don't have salt trucks, it's even worse. So down here, we're just not prepared for it. And uh, I remember when I lived in Dallas, we had snow all the time. But even uh, I guess yesterday, they had a hundred car pile up over there. And it kind of freaked people out. Five people died. It was crazy. So down here in Houston, the thought of snow. I mean, a couple of years ago, we had it for an hour. You know, there was snow for an hour or two hours and people were getting up in the middle of the night, taking pictures and it just doesn't happen very much. But um, this is this is different. You know, this is coming in for maybe three or four days and we may actually have some snow or some ice. So people are really taking it very seriously. But you know, when I was, when I was uh, trained by brother Barnes, he told me an amazing story. And I think that, uh, this is what we, what we need to, um, you know, kind of think about today is that he said, he said he was asked, uh, to go out into the countryside and to pray for someone. And, um, or give a Bible study. I can't remember what it was, but it was some kind of, um, you know, missional work that God had sent him to. And he got to the river and the river was, um, was overflowing the boundaries and they couldn't get across the river. And he said, well, I guess I can't go. And the Lord spoke to him and said, remember? And he said, as soon as he said it, I knew. He said, so I started, he said, I started getting, taking my, my, my shirt off and, you know, he said, started going, get, hold him. He said, because when he was a boy and when he was not living for God, he, uh, he had to swim the river, hold his clothes over his head, um, you know, so they wouldn't be completely wet, uh, just so he could go to the movies that he, he, uh, he, he crossed the, a river that was overflowing because he wanted to go see the movies bad enough. He was willing to pay the price, whatever that cost to be cold or wet. And then, uh, you know, navigated it, put his clothes, held his clothes o over his head while he, you know, went off to the side. And so he, he said, you know, if you would do that for a movie, he said, how much more would you do that for me? And so he told me, he said, look, I don't hunt. He said, because these guys get up at five o'clock in the morning and they're out there in the elements. And they, he said, he said, I know that if I, if I do that for hunting, God will want me to do that for him. And he said, so I'd rather not. 
have to put myself in that position. So, you know, it's, it, this is the kind of, this is the thought process. Whatever you would do for sin, what would you do for God? Hey, look, I was raised in Wisconsin. Um, we would fish, we would go up the St. Joe river, um, over in Michigan and we would go up there at night. I would neoprene waders, neoprene gloves, and I would fish from 12 to six in the morning in the 35 degree water catching salmon. Okay. I would stay up all night, wade in the 35 degree water, uh, to catch fish. How much more should I be willing to navigate the elements or deal with whatever's going on out here for God. We, we cannot do anything less for God than we would do for sin or for anything else. What, what's a priority? Well, you guys go out and hunt and we fish. And I mean, I've fished in all kinds of weather down here, man. Cause man, I, I don't get to fish very much. If I go, if it's raining, are you kidding me? Man, hey man, I, I'm going unless it's lightning and thunder or whatever, or it's really dangerous. We're going just a little bit of rain. It's not going to stop me. I'm going to fish, man. So, you know, I think uh, we have that attitude for, for fishing. No big deal for God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, the roads are going to be cold and, and we might, you know, be, we can't go to church. Oh, but those same people that can't go to church, you know, uh, they can go to Walmart or they can go to Target or they can figure out how to go to eat or they can navigate uh, their hunting stand or whatever. And it's just because. Our attitude towards God is different because we don't have enough passion. We don't have enough passion. You have a passion for fishing or you have a desire, you make it work, you figure it out. And so this is what I'm doing. I'm not suggesting everybody out there, uh, you know, in three degrees or whatever, get out there and run around your neighborhood. I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm talking about attitude and spirit. I'm talking about willingness. And so today I, I felt impressed, you know, earlier this week that I needed to do a prayer walk. And I thought, okay, and the Lord already impressed me where to go and what to do. And I'm like, well, man, it's 38 degrees and it's raining. So <laughs> how many times have you fished in 38 degrees or how many times have you been outside? Really? You wouldn't go do a prayer walk for 30 minutes in the rain, but you'd go fish for the, and for 30 minutes in the rain or an hour in the rain or two hours in the rain. So uh, this is, this is the, the, the tone behind what God asked of Abraham. Take your son, your only son, and offer him to me as a sacrifice. Why? Because all of the pagan worshipers thought nothing. They thought nothing of sacrificing their sons to Moloch, offering them in the altar. I mean, Joshua said, whoever builds Jericho again will build it on the bones of their son and the man that rebuilt Jericho built, built it with two of his sons. In other words, he killed a son to put him in the wall to say, this is my city. My blood is in this city. My son's death is in this city. I own this city because I paid for it with the life of my boys. I killed the next generation to have my name on this city. And he says, wow, the pagans will do that uh, to mark their territory what will you do? And then the Bible tells us plainly in Romans 8, if he, if God held not back his only son, will he not freely give us all things? In other words, God said, I'll show you how committed I am. I'll come. I'll take sin upon myself. I'll die in your stead. I'll hold nothing back for you. That's how much he loves us. He gave his all for me. The very least that I can do is give my all for him. Oh, I don't know what's happening here. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. My uh, gimbal just died. So we're going to do it old school today. Maybe this is what we need to do. Okay, we're getting out of the car now. Let's go for a walk. All right, guys, I'm going to flip it around so you can see where we're going. When you have boundaries, um, boundaries are significant. So just right behind me is the uh, boundary to Pasadena. So at every boundary, that's where there's a demarcation of spirit worlds. And so when you come in and out of a boundary, you always do it in Jesus' name. And part of the walking is to be able to identify in Jesus' name what is there and then to put something in its place. 
to establish the kingdom of God there by declaring it. You can see the water that's already been uh, through the night and this freezes, you could see how this would be a problem. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of walk in it today just a little bit. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you uh, something that I did a couple weeks back. I, I did a prayer walk over here and I really felt impressed um, to go this direction. This is another direction than where I usually go. Um, or where I have gone, I, I just was kind of extending it. Every time I would walk, I would kind of extend it. And, um, but I never went this far. I never went, I went, never went this direction. This is more towards Pasadena. So I'm actually in Pasadena right now, but right on the edge of Deer Park. And uh, I'll show you this in just a second here. But take a look at this. You can see the muck and the mud here. Then I come to a, a really big, really good, big barrier here. Look at this. So this is where I, normally we would stop because how are you going to navigate this? I was telling you this about brother, about brother Barnes, what God said to brother Barnes. And I thought, my God, <laughs> today I'm thinking, okay. There's my river, here's our water supply. And I wouldn't do a prayer walk to, to cross this river, but what would I do when I was fishing? I wouldn't think anything of getting wet or anything like that. So, <laughs> just to show you what I came up against. So I just started walking along the side here and I'm trying to, this is another natural barrier and oftentimes, there are things that oftentimes there are things that happen along these rivers or these water supplies and if there seems to be some fresh water in there I don't know I don't think it's all sewage some kind of a bio or something here a small one but I also saw a path across across the way there so I start seeing the symbolism of all this. I'm gonna get back up on a little higher spot now. I'll turn it back, out, back around, you can see. So there is a little bridge right there where, where the cars can get across. That's a really great thing to pray. Let me, let me change something here. I think it'll help. Let's take this out. All right, there we go. Now it looks a little bit, a little bit different. Okay, it looks better. All right, now you can see the, you can see the bridge there. And I thought, okay, God, how do we cross? Is it worth the journey for me to walk all the way to the bridge? Or is there a better place to cross? How do we connect? How do we connect this community? How do we, how do we get across to the other side? So I just walked this territory here. You can see my houses over here. There's the same thing, you have the power lines. You have uh, still the petrol, petrol flowing through here. If we walk over here. So these are symbolisms. So if, I, if I'm taking the kingdom of God to my community, what's the parable for me? What, is, what would Jesus teach? If Jesus was here, what would he teach? The kingdom of heaven is like what? The kingdom of heaven is like what? So I, I'm walking on the boundary line and along the boundary line is where all of the, this is the water flow this is the electricity. Here's the here's the pipeline for the Petro, and it's right on the boundaries. So no wonder Satan is going to try to fight us over our boundaries. That's why he said you're going to possess. You're going to possess the gates. You're going to possess the gates of your enemy. So right now, I want to pray with you about your resources. I want to pray with you about what God is wanting to unlock and release wherever you are today. We are out here just kind of showing our willingness. I'm showing God my willingness to brave the outdoors just for a little bit and, and do the very minimum that I would do for my own adventure of maybe going fishing. How much more would I do to come out and pray and talk to the Lord? We have to have some lessons sometimes that we learn from the land. What did he tell us? 
If my people will, I will. He will heal the land. He will heal the land. And this is what I believe that God wants us to do. He wants us to get some cues. The, I said this yesterday in the broadcast, the, the earth groans and travails. The ground itself is teaching us. Weather patterns are teaching us. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that there would be earthquakes in diverse places. He said that there's going to be all kinds of stuff happening in the earth. This is the hemorrhaging of the earth. This is the tearing apart of the earth, the volcanoes and the earthquakes and all of the random weather. This is all uh, talking about man out of his place, out of alignment. The sin that came into, into man's heart has affected the world because it's all connected. We're all connected. This is all a part of a very, uh, it's, it's all interconnected. That's the part that Jesus is trying to explain to us with the parables is that it's connected. The kingdom of heaven is like. What he's saying is all connected. It all is integrated. It is not separate. The kingdom of God is not separate. It, it's, it's not in its own little box. We have to let the Lord work with us every single day and it be a part of our lifestyle. So this is what we're doing. All right, let's pray for a minute together right now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we surrender ourselves to you. We show, oh God, our willingness today to serve, our willingness to give, our willingness, oh God, to pour our lives out for you, to be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. This is our reasonable service. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, that there's no barrier that you can't get us across. We thank you, God, that there's there's no place that your spirit cannot go. There's nothing, oh God, that can stop the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And God, for all of the flow of resources, we release this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The flow of resources, oh God, into our community. Oh God, into our churches. Oh God, the access points, oh God. We are praying it for all of our families, for all of our churches, for all of our people all over the world. I'm standing out here today showing you my willingness, Lord. Showing you, God, my obedience. And as I operate in obedience right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the back of flesh. We break the strongholds of, of wickedness. We bring down the strongholds of sin. And we thank you, Father, that we are crossing over into a new dimension. And today we are prophetically standing, oh God, at a crossroads. I thank you, Lord. We're standing at a crossroads and we are praying the prayer of faith today in Jesus name. All right. Notice this two directions. Now look at the wildlife that's right here. We got ducks and birds and everything. This is so cool. So there's water flow in this direction. And then you come back over here. There's another cross point. I didn't even know this existed. It's right in my backyard. I mean, less than a mile from my house. Here's another little water supply. So it, it goes two different directions here. And so we're going to do this prophetically today. I know this is... <laughs> All right, let's go down here and take a look at this. In Jesus' name. Woo. It's kind of steep. I think with the extra rain, it's even deeper than the last time I was out here. So you can see the how fast it's moving. And then here's the other outlets. So here's another lesson. This is another lesson from the land, okay? This is a lesson in humility right here. This is a lesson in humility. What does this mean? Is that in order for a river to become a river, it has to be a little lower than the tributaries that are around it. So we'll go back and I'll show you this again. Look. See that? That water is flowing in to this bigger area. And you can see how fast it's flowing as we go down a little bit more. You can see how fast it's going. And that's because it's dumping out from here and coming into there. 
So you want more flow in your life? You want the river to, to be stronger in your life? You have to be a little bit lower. You have to humble yourself just a little bit more. So I have to have a willingness to say, okay, God, let me, let me get myself down. You know, someone says there's, there's plenty of room at the top. You know, there really is a lot of room at the bottom too. There's a lot of people don't want to be there. They're not willing to humble themselves. But Jesus said, what? If you want to be first, you got to be last. He that is the servant of all is the greatest among you. Now, <laughs> we're going to do for Jesus today the very minimum that we've done for ourselves. If I do this for fishing, to catch a fish, how much more would I do this for taking territory for God? So I'm going across this river right now. Well, that was no big deal, was it? Was it there really that big of a deal? No, it's not that big of a deal. My feet are wet. Yes, but I'm crossing over. And, and I'm getting past the boundary. This is, this is a symbolic thing that we're doing today, is that I'm walking this together with you to say we are getting to the other side. We are crossing over in the name of Jesus. And I'm just speaking this for your life today, that whatever you thought just was a mental barrier, was a boundary, was something that you couldn't get past, that you couldn't do. We're at a crossroads right now. We're gonna have the humility, the dedication, the sensitivity. We're gonna do whatever it takes to be obedient to God. And we're gonna say in Jesus' name, this is our city, this is our territory. We're claiming it for God. And guess what? There's already a road here for me. That's something that's already prepared for us. Father, I thank you that you already have the road paved for my destiny if I would just be obedient and cross over. If I'd be willing to humble myself in the name of Jesus. So Father, I speak it right now by the authority of the word of God, by the power that's in the name of Jesus. We are passing over, God. We are walking into our destiny. We are walking into your promises. We are walking into your will. God, I'm speaking it for everyone that's watching with me right now. I am declaring prophetically. I am declaring in Jesus' name that we are passing over. God, I thank you that resources are dumping in. Oh God, and we are getting in that flow of the river of the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's time, Lord, for our land to be healed. It's time for our nation, oh God, to be repaired. It's time for our cities to have revival. It's time for our churches to be focused. It's time for your people, oh God, to be all in. It's time for the glory of God to be poured out. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for all the stories that I've heard of when they busted up the ice to baptize people and they were so ready to be saved that it didn't matter that there was icy, icy lakes out there. Oh God, and they got in the water and it didn't feel cold. Father, I thank you, Jesus, that you've always been there. You've always supported us in our obedience. And I thank you, God, today that this is a small thing. Oh God, just to, just to take a few minutes to walk. Oh God, just to take a few minutes to pray out in the open. Oh God, and just to remind ourselves that you own it all, that you're in charge of everything. Oh God, that there's no winter vortex that's going to stop your will, that there's no element that's going to keep back your glory because all of these things are, are things that you use to tell us of your kingdom. These things are all to enhance it. All things work together for the good. All things, everything in nature, everything that's happening, it's all for good. So I'm asking you, God, to turn it for good. Take this weekend, take the snow, take this winter, take, oh God, all of the things that are slowing us down and stopping us in our tracks and use it, oh God, for your glory. Use it, oh God, to keep us refocused, Help us, oh God. This has been a season of stops and starts. This has been a season, Father. Uh, of, of constantly having to adjust ourselves, Lord. What's coming next, oh God? So we've had a pandemic and now they're saying that it's there's different strains of it that are coming and, and all of the different uh, things that we've had to navigate over this last year, it's all just been training and development. But I thank you, Father, that you are with us. I thank you, Lord, that you are helping us in the name of Jesus. I want you to raise your hands right where you are and I want you to thank the Lord that he's with you and that you're navigating it. You're walking it. You're going to do it in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm seeing a prayer request there. 
uh, I saw someone coming. I didn't see all of it. I just saw part of it coming in because uh, I was praying, but I did see that someone was asking for some reconciliation. Let's pray it for our families. Father, we are praying for families to be reconciled. We are praying for the bondages of drugs to be broken. We are taking authority right now over addictions. God, we are praying in Jesus' name. We see what people do for drugs. They steal, they they lie. Oh God, they, they, they go to extremes to, 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 to get their cravings met, oh God. And then as soon as they get it, they'll go and do it again, God. They, they're, so, they're so controlled by it. But Father, you can break that. You can break it and you can turn it for good. You can remove all of that bondage. You can remove all of that addiction. You can remove all of that craving and you can turn it, oh God, because that craving is just all it is, Father. All that craving is, is just a hunger. It's just a hunger that's never filled by drugs. It's something else, Father. It's something else. You said that the earth is never full of drinking in the water. God, you said it, Lord. You said it in your word. Oh, God, and as we walk through this land, we realize that no matter how much water is on it, it drinks it in, it soaks it in, God. And we're reminded, uh, we're reminded that the flesh is never satisfied. The eye is never satisfied with seeing. So, Lord, we know that the flesh, uh, the flesh can never be content. But I thank you, Lord, that in you we are. That in you, oh God, you feel that. And I pray that you would give us a craving for the things of God. A craving for righteousness. A craving, oh God, to walk with you. Help us, oh God, to be like the household of Chloe that, that Paul wrote about that was addicted to ministry. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. So here's another another little parabolic spot, a little symbolic spot where you see water is flowing and you see the power lines above us. You see, of course, here's another uh, another uh, point here where the river is flowing. And so as, as we walk and we pray, we see now another entrance point. Once we cross over, look at this. It gives us access to another place that we've not gotten to. And I'm going to speak this prophetically now that God is about to open up things for you that you've not gotten to yet. Areas that have been, uh, that, that you have not been able to get to. Yesterday, we talked about breaking through barriers, getting past walls, getting into new seasons. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. So if you want to do something, if you want to do something extraordinary, then you have to do something. Uh, you have to change something in your life. Hallelujah. More access points. See, when you get across the boundary, now it's a new place, new territory, and we're marking it for God. And it's open. The door is open. The gate is open. The wire has already, look at this. Talk about parabolic. The wire has already been dismantled here. Somebody has already opened this up. Hallelujah. God has already made the way and I'm speaking this prophetically. I'm standing here and I'm touching this pole right now in the name of Jesus. God has already busted up the barriers that's keeping you from your destiny, from what belongs to you. This is yours in Jesus name. Say it's mine in Jesus name. I'm walking in it right now in Jesus name. I want you to imagine that, sir. If you're worried about your wife or and you want to reconcile, I want you to imagine that this was drugs. I want you to speak this and hold it with me in Jesus' name. All that drug addiction that was a boundary, it's broken in Jesus' name. It's something we can just step over in Jesus' name. And so you just take these imageries and you use them. God is giving us this insight in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Watch this. How did they do this? How did this happen? We have Petra over here on this side too. So somehow it turned over there. But when we get on the other side, guess what? There's still a flow on this side too. There's still power on this side. So God has a way to get past the boundaries. God has a way to move it around. God has a way, just like, just like mankind has figured out a way to get the, get the power where it needs to go or get the petrol where it needs to go. God knows how to get the glory where he wants it to go. And so we are, we're taking new territory for God today. I've never walked this spot before. I've never been here before. And we as the church have never been here before. Before, and I'm declaring it over your life right now. I'm speaking it in the name of Jesus right now. And we speak, oh God, to this spiritual realm. We take authority. We plead the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Shadomo yakata sata. Hallelujah. How many feeling the blessings of God today? Are you feeling the hand of the Lord with you today? Amen. Amen. All right, I want you to lift your hands with me right now, Father. I thank you in Jesus' name. 
I thank you in Jesus' name. Our hearts are full. Our spirits, oh God, are, are surrendered. We have, we have stepped out in faith today. We have walked in obedience. And I thank you, Father, that you are with us in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. All right, we're gonna walk back another spot now. And we're gonna pray one more symbol today. <laughs> I hope I hope you all are uh, having a good time today. I hope you're having fun today with me. Sometimes, uh, you know, life is an adventure and you have to keep your prayer fresh. You have to keep your life fresh. So we're having a little bit of fun today, just getting out here and praying uh, these symbolic and prophetic prayers. It's, you know, it seems really simple and you say, well, maybe it's not doing that much, but if you can have imagery for your faith, if you can have imagery for your faith, this is what happens. And so it's supposed to be exciting. Living for God is supposed to be exciting. Living for God is supposed to be something that is an adventure every day. It's supposed to be fresh. You have to work at it. You see, if you don't, if you don't keep focus, if you don't keep vision in your life, the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. What does that mean? Uh, it means that if you don't have something to work towards, people will naturally drift. They'll, they'll lose energy. They'll cast off, cast off restraint, one translation says. All right, I know you don't really want to see me right now too much, so I'm going to turn it back out to where, where, we're, where we're walking. Watch this now. We have one more, one more little symbol. All right, here we go. So by just walking out in, in the cold today and uh, just being out in the elements, I'm just reminding myself and reminding my flesh that my body serves the purpose of God. And then I'm giving some imagery. Now what happens is later on, this will come back. These little imageries will come back and it will teach me, it teaches us how to kind of, as we, as we just live our lives, it, it teaches us uh, to always be listening to God and always be learning from the things that are around you. So for those that are just driving down this little street right here, this is no big deal at all. They don't even think about where I just walked. They don't have to because there's an infrastructure of a bridge that's been engineered to get them across this, this, this water. It's made for it. And so as I come down to this little, this little bridge, we walk down in here. I look at this infrastructure and I'm really amazed by it. Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. <laughs> if you've never seen a bridge, it's awesome. If you've seen a lot of them, it's pretty basic and pretty simple. So I'm sure everyone listening or watching me right now has seen a bridge before. But when you're praying, it takes on a different meaning to you. When you're praying, it feels different. It's something you take in. So I just look at this and I say, okay, God, there's a really, awesome uh, thing here that's going on that allows us speedy access to the other side to cross over. This is what the church has got to be. This is what the church has got to be. We cannot take for granted every bridge that, that are, there's so many bridges, but you don't take for granted this bridge when you're trying to walk to the other side. You don't take for granted. When you're driving, you don't even think about it, but when you're walking, you really realize how blessed you are that there's a bridge to get you over. And folks, this is what the church is. We're an infrastructure that God has built to help people cross over, to help people navigate. And it's easy for people to just take us for granted or take the infrastructure for granted. But whether they take it for granted or not, we're reminded that this is why we're here. We are to bridge that gap to help people move into a new dimension. So sometimes we have to walk across things. We have to navigate things so others do not. That's what an intercessor does. An intercessor navigates. 
goes into new places, takes new territory. And we, we then create possibilities for there to be bridges that are built. And so I use that just as a, as just a symbol for my faith today. A very small little bridge. It doesn't seem very significant. But folks, if it wasn't there, there would be no access. That little bridge seems insignificant. But for Deer Park and Pasadena, that is a huge, huge, huge connector. Because this is not something you can drive across. I'm sorry, you can't... Uh, you have a very difficult time. The steepness of it, the the, 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 the mud, I mean, you just, it would slow everything down, stop everything down. Uh, it, it would just be a huge, huge problem. And we have to recognize that there are no insignificant churches. There are no insignificant uh, saints. There are no insig insignificant prayers. You say, well, our church is not very big or our community is not very big or, you know, man, what's, what's my little intercession gonna do? Hey, what's that little bridge doing right there? What's that little bridge doing right there? Oh yes, it means more. You mean more to God than you realize. Your prayers, your, your, your willingness to serve, your willingness to get out there, your willingness to be a light, your willingness to be salt, your willingness, yes. So this is what we're learning from the land. This is what we do as we walk. We get these things that come to us and God shows it to us and, and I'm showing the Lord my willingness to maybe even look a little foolish today to be outside in the rain and in the cold and in the wind. But I'm out here praying. I'm out here giving him praise and giving him glory today. And I hope that you are blessed. I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that you stay safe, that God will oper help you to operate in wisdom. But in Jesus' name, we will forge forward. We will press forward. Now, one last, one last little insight. And that is the wind. Now today I really feel the wind hitting me. As the wind hits my face. And bears down upon me. I am reminded. I'm reminded about the significance of the wind and what it represents. And it can be two things. It can be, it can be resistance from the enemy. Evil spirits. Or it can be a reminder of the awesome power of God. The wind blows where it wants to, but you cannot tell whether it goes, where it comes. So is everyone born of the spirit. So I, I choose today not to just think about what's against me, but to be reminded of who is for me. And he said, everyone born of the spirit has this story to tell of the wind. The wind blows where it wants to. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. You hear the sound. Everyone that's born of the Spirit. I am a child of the wind. If the wind has ever hit your face, you know what that feels like. And you can never forget it. If you've ever experienced, uh, friends, here we are. We've had a great time praying together. God bless you. We love you. Remember, don't live in the shadows. But, but walk and operate in the light for <laughs> every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. This has been a great little adventure with you today. We'll see you next week. God bless you. We love you.